Well, an immigration news site, Ray Keating is an economist and a writer. He just published a piece at Real Clear Markets saying that Americans ought to toughen up and accept immigration because it embiggens the economy. That's not a real word, but they use it on The Simpsons, and so we are. Is it really that simple, though? Are there really no valid policy considerations other than enlarging our GDP as quickly as possible? And does immigration really grow the economy that much for people who already live here? All valid questions to be answered by Ray Keating, who joins us now. Ray, thanks all for coming on. Hey, Tucker, and Biggins, I love it. Uh, it's, we're, 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 we're rolling with it, Ray. <laughs> I think you're a smart guy and a serious guy, but I think this theory is silly for the following reason. The underlying assumption is that all immigrants are the same. They're fungible when, in fact, they're not. The value of a software engineer is different from that of a laborer. Henry Ford is different from members of MS-13. It depends upon the kind of immigrants you get, and I don't think you factor that in to your calculation. Well, I think you're absolutely right in terms of the contribution they make. I mean, we all make different contributions to the economy. So immigration is great in terms of bringing entrepreneurs in. Immigrants tend to be very entrepreneurial, more entrepreneurial than native-born. Um, young workers, uh, young immigrants will help us in terms of people getting older, baby boomers retiring. Uh, and then there are people at varying skill levels that help out and are largely complementary to the existing labor force, and that helps everybody and it winds up increasing productivity. So I think, listen, any economist worth his salt is going to say they're obviously costs. The point with the letter that we signed, 1,470 economists said that, you know, immigration is a net economic plus for the country, and I think that's, you know, that's one of the few issues that economists actually agree on. Well, I, I don't think that's, a, that's a, an economic statement. It's a political statement, and, and I think it's a, it's a meaningless statement. A net economic benefit doesn't mean anything. I mean, because there are a lot of people who lose, and they are voters and citizens, and they are being hurt by a policy that helps another, and I would argue, smaller number of people. Well, you, you so can't it's, look it's, at, it's meaningless, no, actually. You, no, actually, it's not. I mean, again, it's, it's sound economics 101, and if you look at... Um, the economy, you know, I don't want you to fall into that zero-sum idea, you know what I mean? It's not like oh, the not. economy is, one, uh, is a pie and we only have so many jobs to go around. What we need is economic growth, and that's what happens in the economy. So, you know, this whole immigration debate is very frustrating from an economist standpoint. What we want to see, I mean, I would rather see a growth uh -huh. agenda so uh -huh. that we're growing so much so robustly that we need workers from all oh. around the world to come here. Like That's California. what we should be focused on if we're right. really concerned about the economy. So, but it's actually not an economist perspective, and I, and I, <laughs> I appreciate the kind of subtle patronizing <laughs> as an economist, but you're wrong, as you know. So you can see economies as across the world. Yeah, of course, as you know. China has no net immigration, neither does Singapore, and neither has been held back by it. California has massive we are, we net are not immigration, our and it's fan... much poorer than it was 30 years ago. Tucker, so like, Tucker, our, our edge in the global, one of the key edges that we have is our entrepreneurial uh, right. DNA, if you will. And the people that come here, immigrants, are, tend to be risk takers, right? You left your country, you came here, that's a risky endeavor. And that's why we see a higher rate <laughs> of entrepreneurship among, I, immigration, I, I uh, among immigrants. Wait, didn't you just say, as an economist, and now you're talking about the DNA of entrepreneurship? Well, you're moving into theology it, fairly it, rapidly. Am I, am I not allowed no, to use some, some no, nice and, language? And, I don't and, have to be no, a boring and, economist. And I can be a good way, economist. No, I don't want to be way, boring about are, it. And we always welcome theologians here on the show. Just not when they pose as economists. So there's no way to quantifiably measure. Oh, there are a whole host of studies. The National DNA. Academy of well, okay. Sciences just did a study. Um, uh, Richard Vedder, who is a wonderful. I would love to see that study. Richard Vedder is a wonderful conservative economist, did a uh -huh. study a few years ago for the George W. Bush Institute. I'd recommend you read that and yeah. maybe pick up an Economics 101 textbook okay. along the way as well. <laughs> I, I hope it'll have a chapter on the DNA of entrepreneurship because I, I'm sure there'll be lots of math equations in that one. But let me ask you this. Yes. If, look, I can see part of what you're saying, which is there are a lot of energetic, smart immigrants, and I love them personally. My business partner is one of them. But I think that there are also a lot of immigrants who are clearly a net drain on the economy who consume more in goods and services than they pay back. I mean, there's no disputing that, well, and, and you know it. So here's the <laughs> question. Why not make an affirmative effort to import people with existing skills or wealth and then we'd be much richer. What well, there you go. We can agree on how about startup visas, right? Why don't we have startup visas like other countries do? I think that's a great idea to get entre oh. entrepreneurial immigrants into the country. So we can agree on that. There's a whole host of areas here no. where economic common sense can take hold and we can do uh, some positive things on the economic front in terms of immigration. But the idea of focusing on... You know, the notion that we're blaming immigrants for our current problems, you know what, Barack Obama, 
was great oh. at stopping immigration because our economy was so bad, we actually leveled off and people actually okay, went so back to again, Mexico. Again, we're veering, again, we're veering we from need... economics into value judgments here. It's that, not a question of blaming anybody. No, 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 hold on. Well, it's not a question policy. of blaming anybody. You're not answering my core question. Okay, what's your is, core question? Why would a post industrial economy such as ours continue to import people on the basis of family relations and physical proximity? If you live close to the United States but have no skills or education or money, you can get here. If you have relatives here, same thing. Why don't we say we're going to shut that down? We don't need factory workers or ditch diggers. We need software engineers. Why not just import them? I, I would say that, that we probably need people up and down the spectrum. I, I actually have a look. Sure we do. I, listen, I live on Long Island, and to use the anecdote, I used to drive past the local convenience store, and there were people out there a number of years ago when our economy was growing, waiting around to do work that native-born people didn't want to do. So they again, don't want to do it at is, those wages. Tucker, Tucker, let's agree. The key is to get back to an economic growth agenda that you and I, I think, would agree on. Tax reform, tax relief, regulatory reform, regulatory relief. Let's get this economy growing again. And you know what? This immigration issue is going to go away, just like we didn't care about it in the 1980s. I, I, I don't and believe want, that's true. We're going to get I, to the I, point where we, we say, listen, how do we get people into this country right. because we're growing so well? Yeah, I, I've been listening to that kind of rhetoric for 35 years from conservatives in Washington. Just cut marginal tax rates and everything will be fine. And meanwhile, the culture has collapsed. So I, I actually don't buy that. Uh, anymore, oh, you, you talk, we respect. can talk culture too, but I thought that was theology, not economics. It's, it's, <laughs> it, it may be, but it's more meaningful <laughs> than marginal tax rates. Ray, thanks a lot for joining us. I appreciate it. I appreciate it, it Tucker. Take care.